Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here, and oh man, we just got the highest inflation numbers that we've seen in Canada over the past decade at 3.7%, and that means that essentially, speaking in broad terms, your money has lost 3.7% of its value or purchasing power in the past year alone. And this is especially important for right now because the cost of living in Canada is shaping up to be the number one election issue. Now, some politicians are upset about this inflation, some have no comment, and some, mostly the Bank of Canada, think that, hey, this inflation issue is just going to disappear by itself. So in today's video, we're going to go over what these new numbers are, what the politicians are planning on doing about it, and what all of this means for you. But before we do, a huge thank you goes out to The Peak for sponsoring today's video. The Peak is my personal favorite newsletter covering Canadian business news in a smart, entertaining, and convenient way, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later. So let's take a look at this inflation data. Now this just came out this morning and we're seeing a whopping 3.7% inflation year over year right here in Canada. Now last month, we were only at a 3.1% inflation rate. So that is a dramatic increase and it's the highest that we've seen in quite some time. Take a look at this chart. It's a historical chart of CPI or otherwise the main inflation measure here in Canada. And you can see the 3.6 that we're experiencing now. Well, we haven't seen that since around 2011 and 2012. And we're also witnessing witnessing a similar story play out with increasing inflation in the States as well. In many months recently, they've actually had over 5% inflation. Now this is a huge deal for Canadians because it essentially means that your money can purchase 5% less than it could the year before. If this continues at a more sustainable rate, the cost of living gets worse and worse and worse for average Canadians. So it makes sense that so many Canadians are concerned about this rising cost of living. Just take a look at this data I found on Twitter. And by the way, if you're not already following me, you can follow me at at Russ Matthews 32. But take a look at this. There was actually a poll and they gave people a huge list of uh, potential election issues and said, hey, choose five of them. Now, out of those five choices, 62% of people indicated that the cost of living was one of their top issues. And this is something that people are concerned about no matter which party they support. Just take a look at this. If you're someone who's supporting the Liberals, well, 55% of people indicated that cost of a living was going to be an issue. Same for the Conservatives, 59% for cost of living. That's their top issue. And even for the NDP, the highest percentage here of 67% of NDP supporters indicating that the cost of living is their number one issue. And with this new data out, both the inflation numbers and just how important this is to Canadians, political leaders are starting to chime in. And Aaron O'Toole, the leader of the Conservatives, pointed out that, hey, he's going to blame Justin Trudeau for this increased cost of living. Let's listen in on what he had to say just today in a press conference. The inflation numbers, the highest inflation numbers in two decades, should worry Canadians. Mr. Trudeau's spending, Mr. Trudeau's economic approach is leading to inflation. People are not being able to afford groceries, gas, we're already in a housing crisis. For seniors on fixed income, for families at the margins, inflation is pricing them out of their way of life. Small business owners have been telling me for months they're seeing costs go up while they're already holding on by a thread. Canada's recovery plan addresses that. We get the country working, we get the economy growing, we address the overspending by Mr. Trudeau, and we help direct families. We give a $1 raise for working families. We support a GST holiday in December to let people get ahead and to help small businesses. We're going to power up our economy to tackle the rising cost of living. So obviously O'Toole is taking aim at the Prime Minister saying, hey, it's because he spent so much money that we're seeing this inflation. And then he offers some potential solutions saying he's going to clean up the amount that they're spending, as well as a GST holiday in December, where people wouldn't have to pay GST on retail purchases in uh, small business stores, as well as a $1 increase for Canadian workers. When he says a $1 per hour raise for Canadians, it's not actually a raise of the minimum minimum wage, he's referring to one of his policies inside his plan, and this is the document that tells people what their plan is, uh, and this $1 hour per raise is actually referring to a doubling of the Canada workers' benefit, up to a maximum of $2,800 for indigo individuals or $5,000 for families. Now the way they get to this $1 per hour raise is saying that, hey, if you're making $20,000 per year and that's your hourly rate, well, the amount that you're actually going to be making from this increased Canada's worker benefit would equal a $1 per hour raise. But Aaron O'Toole actually gets called out by a reporter saying, hey, would those things even actually help inflation at all? How is that going to really help the situation with inflation? I, I hear you complain about that, but I, I don't really hear many solutions other than you're going to give Canadians a, a break. That could be a popular thing. It could not be. 
I'm going to give Canadians the choice to make some extra purchase decisions in December where there will be a GST holiday so that they can end the year with that little holiday gift, with a little extra. And it's 5% right at the, uh, at the till, but that is a meaningful way we can say, look, we've all come through a difficult journey together and we know your main streets across the country, a lot of retailers are suffering. We're going to kickstart a bit of consumer spending to let people get that gift, get that little purchase, and in, at the same time, not do it online, not have it delivered by an American web giant, have it helping those businesses who are hanging on by a thread. This is when a government needs to recognize Canadians deserve a break, they deserve an ethical government, they deserve Canada's recovery plan. So the question is diverted a little bit so he can talk more about his GST holiday plan, looking to kickstart more consumer spending. And while this might be a short-term discount for Canadians, as well as a potential boon for small physical businesses, over the long term, increased consumer spending is definitely an inflationary pressure. So it's a little bit interesting that he uses this plan to sort of counteract this question about high inflation. But on the Liberal side of things, the Prime Minister directly responds to these criticisms that have been launched at him regarding inflation by Aaron O'Toole, and he takes some shots of his own. But before I show you exactly what Trudeau just said today, I want to talk a little bit about today's video sponsor, The Peak. It's been about a month since I found out about The Peak, and it's quickly become one of my favorite ways to stay up to date with Canadian news. It's an email newsletter that gets sent directly to your inbox each and every morning, and I love how quickly it gets to the point. It only takes about five minutes to read and it's written in such an entertaining way that I look forward to reading it every morning with my coffee. If you're familiar with the American newsletter, The Morning Brew, well, this is just like that, but it's way more relevant for Canadians, and the best part is it's 100% free. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to click the link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. And once again, a huge thank you goes out to The Peak for sponsoring today's video and for supporting the channel. But now let's see what Trudeau had to say today in a press conference. He doesn't hold back his punches, but he does make some rather interesting comments. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Mr. O'Toole this morning made an issue of the inflation numbers uh, that came in at 3.7%, which is one of the highest in the past 20 years. He called it a cost of living crisis. Wondering if you'd like to respond or uh, have any comment on the numbers themselves or you know whether you can tell us what you could do about it. First of all, we fully respect the Bank of Canada's role in setting monetary policy, so we won't uh, comment directly on that. But I, I will say that in terms of cost of living, I don't think uh, Aaron O'Toole can be considered serious when uh, he's turning his back on getting women into the workforce by investing in proper childcare. That's going to make a huge difference, not just in the lives of families, but in the well-being of our businesses and our economy. And the fact that Aaron O'Toole doesn't get that is yet another example of the fact that the Conservatives are stuck in a, in a Harper version of solutions to problems that simply don't work. The choice that Canadians get to make in this election are very, very clear. Do Conservatives take Canada back or do we move forward for everyone? Do you, would you support a, a slightly higher tolerance for inflation? I don't know. When I think about the biggest, most important economic policy this government, if re-elected, would move forward, you'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. Uh, you'll understand that I think about families. When we first got elected in 2015, the very first thing we did was raise taxes on the wealthiest 1% so we could lower them for the middle class. So he starts out by criticizing Aaron O'Toole saying, hey, Aaron, you don't have any right to talk about cost of living because you don't support my plan to reduce childcare costs down to $10 per day, potentially making the cost of living a little bit more affordable for Canadian families. He also makes the comment that the government isn't responsible for managing inflation and instead that responsibility lands squarely on the shoulders of the Bank of Canada. But then when he gets talking a little bit more and questioned about the Bank of Canada, he makes the comment that I think is a little bit frustrating. When the Canadian monetary policy is brought up, he kind of laughs at it and makes light of it, saying, hey, you'll forgive me if I don't think too much about monetary policy and instead think about families. Now, when it comes to an election campaign, this makes a lot of sense to do with not many Canadians understanding the true impact of the monetary policy that we have here in Canada, and instead of sort of shifting the discussion to families and a potential wealth tax. 
Although it sounds dry and a little bit boring, monetary policy has a huge impact on every single Canadian, and I think they just don't realize it. In fact, all of the major campaign issues in this election, I believe, can be tied back to monetary policy. You talk about the, the housing affordability crisis. Well, the Bank of Canada largely has been controlling interest rates, and that changes the affordability of houses. Add on top of that the income uh, inequality, as well as the gap between the people who are wealthy and the, the people who aren't, the haves and the have-nots, this has all been impacted by the Canadian monetary policy of the past year and a half. So it's definitely a little bit frustrating to see him shrug this question off, but it makes sense from a campaign standpoint because most Canadians, when they hear the term monetary policy, they're instantly put to sleep. So instead, Trudeau offloads the responsibility of this monetary policy to the Bank of Canada. But what does the Bank of Canada think about this record high uh, inflation rate? If you want to get the full opinion of the Bank of Canada, I made a super detailed video on it. I'll link it right here and it's also in the description. But essentially, the Bank of Canada thinks, hey, this inflation thing, it's not something we need to worry about, it's something that's going to disappear over the next year. As of their last monetary policy report, the Bank of Canada's governor, Tiff Macklem, said it's only really due to two reasons. The first one is something called base year effects. Essentially what this means is that when we measure inflation today, we're actually comparing it to a year ago. And a year ago, we had super low inflation because of the pandemic. So of course, when we compare against a year ago, we're going to see a higher number. He also blames this increased inflation on supply chain bottlenecks, saying, hey, because of COVID, we have various closures all across the supply chain, meaning it's more difficult to create and produce goods, and as a result, prices are higher, and we see higher inflation numbers because of that. But he says that, hey, once COVID's not as much of an issue, we're going to see these sort of supply chain bottlenecks open up, and that inflation number is going to go down by itself. So obviously, there are a whole bunch of different opinions when it comes to this whole inflation issue in Canada, and I'm curious as to what you think about it, so make sure to let me know down there in the comments, and like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and make sure to check out that link in the description where you can check Check out The Peak, the sponsor of today's video. I love that newsletter, so if you're not already subscribed, make sure to check that out. But with all that said, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit, and I'll see you next time.